It is 601, following the meeting of the Lakewood Select Board to order. The first order of business is to review, discuss, and vote on the meeting minutes from the 24. I have only one comment, and that is the misspelling of the word sheriff. <laughs> Can we blame the paragraph about the Donahue dog? Can we blame word for that? Yes. And okay. Blame word for that. I will make that change. Okay. Uh, I move that we uh, approve the minutes as for balance. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Have to do roll call. Yay. <laughs> uh, any comments on payroll warrants? None. Okay. I want to welcome our new town administrator, Pete Kane, who started last week, got thrown into a town meeting on his second day of work. He seems to have survived. Yeah. <laughs> Including the heat. Yes, yes. No, it was a great experience. Thank you. Huh. Great experience. <laughs> a different experience than what, I, what I've done in, uh, for a town meeting. It, it, it's a one-night experience. One-night experience. Much better than I've had. Okay. Uh, board reorganization we need to select officers for the board for the upcoming year. I nominate Julie the chair. I will second that. I would accept. <laughs> <laughs> Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. The only discussion I have is follow up is just help me out when I okay. stumble because it's right. my first year. Okay, Chair is yours. Let's see. Let's see if you can. I can see you want to your seat. Oh, this for the rest of the meeting. Whoa, yeah. baby! Change happens fast. All right. I forgot to switch your name. Right. No, I don't. Think so. Oh, <laughs> that's just silly. Uh, okay. So then, the next item of business is uh, select board representation on committees. Oh, the board reorganization needs both the vice chair. Yeah. Right. Oh. Oh. So uh, I would nominate. Um, no, I will. I will nominate. Okay. Nominate, yeah. Fortune and as second, vice chair. And I would second that. <laughs> I would accept that. All those in favor? Uh, uh, I. Okay, and then uh, I'll nominate Fred to be clerk. Second. All those in favor? I. I. Okay. okay. Now, do we need select board representatives? Yeah, I think they do. Thank yes. you for saving me. <laughs> Hey, you, you you yeah. I appreciate that. Um, select board representation on committees. Um, typically, in years past, have we shuffled it or have we just taken what we've had previously? Um, I think for the liaisons, we've normally kept those steady, except for town administrator who's always gone with whoever's chair. Okay, all right. Um, and that kind of keeps the workload more or less even for us. That's so um, I I'm I'm okay with doing that. Again, unless um, there's anybody coveting that, um, you know, police or water schools. department. Yeah. See, water department that is other news list there. I'll say, sorry. Uh, yeah, it also people develop knowledge of their departments. Yes, exactly. Yeah. 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 I'm happy to keep with the liaison positions that I have uh, and we'll add town administrator to that. Yeah. And let's see, Joyce will stay with schools, mm, yes. police department, and South County Senior Center and Personnel Committee. Yep. Uh, Fred will be Capital Improvement Planning Committee, SCEMS, Fire Department, Highway Department, and I believe that's it. Yeah. Right, so uh, sounds good. We've got one other thing that I do, and that is I'm the town representative <clears throat> of the Frontier School. Capital Planning Committee. Ah, okay. Okay. But that's not so not secure. just this capital group. Right, right. That, that's that's the town capital committee. That's here. Okay. Uh, do I need a movement to uh, accept all of this? Yeah. Why, why don't I make that move? I, I move we uh, uh, approve the representations and liaison assignments as amended. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, uh, 6.15, we're running a little ahead of time. We're going to meet the new part-time police officer. Uh, I think I saw him hanging out in the parking lot waiting. We'll wait until they're ready. Come in.
Well, we, we, can, uh, yeah, we, we can probably move to the other the long appointment. Yeah, the annual appointments. Yeah, we can do that. Let's do that. Annual appointments. It's the yellow. So it's the yellow. So what? We just got an email that there's no sound. Oh. oh. Sound coming from? No sound for current select board meeting. People didn't get to hear me. Yeah. yeah. Saw it. For the Zoom or for email? It doesn't say. I'm going to bet it's for that. I can hear you on Zoom. I'm going to bet. Oh, it's oh okay. Thank you, Chris. Oh, okay. So it's not like it's the uh, channel 15. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, you want to come? You guys have a yeah, it looks like it's working now. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, that's working now. Thank yeah. you for fixing that. Thank you, Amy. Yeah. Very Annual appointments, the long list. Um, all right. This being my first year doing this, please refresh my memory about what we do. I we do it previously. I think these are all one year appointments um, that we make. And I don't know that. All of these people have been contacted to find out that they still, you know, they still want to be appointed. So we, we normally will appoint them until they come in and say they don't want to be appointed. They don't want to be appointed. Or if there's a place where we've had a problem, then we might consider a different. Got My it. understanding is, at least I'm not aware of any problems with these other than the number of vacancies. Yes. Yep. The animal I, and barn inspector is vacant. I'm sorry, but you no, you know, I was just gonna say we should read the list of vacancies. Yeah, yeah. vacancies. Animal and barn inspector is vacant. Fence viewer and field driver is vacant. Actually, two of those are vacant. Uh Upper Pioneer Valley Veterans Service District representative is vacant. Open Space Committee uh, Select Board Representative is vacant. Would that be one of us? That should be one of us. I was going to nominate you, but let's get through the blank list. All righty, let's get through the blank list and Open Space Committee for someone not on the Select Board is also vacant. Uh, three vacant positions on the Recreation Commission. We have one, two, three, four, five, six that are filled. Uh, Tri Town Beach Commission, one vacant position. If you would like to join Mark if, ETA. If I can put it in a plug, Joyce you know, yeah. do the same thing. Yeah. For yeah. someone who wants to work on the Tri Town Beach Commission, Tri Town Beach leadership has really turned it around. Mm -hmm. yeah. Tri Town Beach seems to be on a really good path. Mm -hmm. It's got good, solid leadership, which it didn't always have. They're cleaning it up. They have a plan for the future, and I think it would be a great place for someone to get involved to yeah. work with. Yeah. Jo Joyce and I were there on Saturday and got walked through what they're doing, and mm -hmm. they really have their act together at this point. Yeah, this would be a good opportunity for somebody whose workload is lighter in the summer because that's when their workload is the most. Oh, so those okay. of us in the academic community, perhaps, yep. can relate to that. Um, and uh, it, it, I just, I was very impressed uh, with we were how much really that has turned around um, and what their plans are for the next year, two or three or five right. years. Right. They they know that they that they, where they are isn't where they want to end up. They want to actually be better. Yeah, and they've been doing a great job at attracting individuals, but also attracting camp groups and other groups yeah, they're, uh, yeah. to generate income which hadn't always been done before. I said, I can't, yep. can't recommend highly yep. enough the job that they're doing over there. Yep. Go after that position. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> when you say they, uh, I see only Mark Boussier on the list. Who else oh, is working? Um, there are uh, three people from Deerfield we met. Um, Fantastic. Patty, who used to live in Waitley, and whose last name is Hasty. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Kalina. Oh, yes. Maddie Talega, and, and then um, 
and uh, Ken, uh, who used to be on the school committee in Deerfield. Okay. And yeah, the other woman, Diane. Yeah, yeah. Diane, yeah. who's also whose last name I also right. don't remember. Okay, so they've got quite a team. They've got they they got, 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 got Patty's in charge of them. She's really right. Yes. Go getter and. and has really got very, very together. Very organized. So you'd be joining a group of four very active. Right. Is, uh, for if anybody were to want to step up for that. Excellent. Uh, do we need a motion to approve these? I move we approve the list as has been of appointments. Have, have been Could I make um, a sure. nomination? Sure. There's a place where there's a select board representative missing. And I was on the open, open, space. open Space Committee. And I'm uh, wondering if you would consider. That one, Julie. Yes. Okay. So I would nominate okay. Julie for the uh, select board representative on the open space committee. Yes. In addition, I'll take that as an amendment to the uh, yeah. <clears throat> motion to approve everything as we have submitted up the sheet, yeah. which will go two minutes, and add to that uh, Julie Wagner to the open space committee. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, shall we? Yeah. Go back to meeting the new part time. Yes. Police officer. Oh. Hi. Hey. Thank you. Introduce the Hi. I just want to take the opportunity to introduce John Wessing. Uh, Hi, John. Hi, part time right. officer. Nice Started to meet training. you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We have a few questions about you. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. All good things. He's got some experience. He works for the VA police full time. Right. He also worked in the polio. Yeah, you saw that on the yeah. on the red of the set then. So got quite the yeah. list of extensive experience. Hopefully we can get them trained up and get them out there. Yeah. Welcome to me. Yeah, well, welcome. Yeah. Welcome. Yeah. welcome very much. Look forward. Uh, thank you. Yeah. All right. I, I couldn't I didn't couldn't think of any questions. <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying to think of something clever and <laughs> And, and, and Jim knows very well. I try to do something clever, and yeah, I don't know, twenty five percent of the time I do, but <laughs> most of the time I don't. Later. <laughs> yeah. Are you going to pull me over for bad inspection sticker? John said a lot. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you told me earlier that you got an inspection. <laughs> Good. No. What kind of people you got? Unknown woman in the audience makes comments. <laughs> you can put that in your article. <laughs> Who's in charge of this meeting? I said, Yeah, Julie. Bang, bang, bang. Any other questions or comments for our new part time police officer? No, no. Welcome and thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Castaway's variance extension. Do we have any? He's called for six thirty. He's called for six thirty. Oh, thank you. Appreciate that. So let's go back to new business. Fiscal year twenty four, end of year transfers. That's that's all right. Yes. So I provided um, in my Friday update the recommendation for some end of year transfers. Three of them. Specifically, the recommendation is to do transfers from the reserve fund. However, yesterday we did receive a request uh, from the Board of Health for doing some uh, line item transfers, which the select board would be asked to do. That's in the updated um, document uh, report that I gave. It should be in the printout. Do we do the? Okay. It's in the. Um, in your packet. In the uh, that page right there that you had. Have. Right here. This one, right here. Yeah, put one direct. It's included one. in this. Yeah. Um, well, no, yeah, no. this just has all the totals. Um, I don't remember. It starts with like a letter. Letterhead. Oh, wait. Maureen Nichols. No, I don't see a big letterhead. Maybe I just saw. It's in that. Um, yeah. It's in that link. Yeah. Oh, I but I can, I can read off what it is. Yeah, okay, go ahead and read that. That's yeah. okay. So out of account 4335412, which is the transfer station hazardous waste collection, decreasing that by $522, that's the current balance. So that's decreasing it to zero. All hazardous waste expenses have already been paid for. So it's utilizing the, the remainder of that line item, as well as uh, 
decreasing the Board of Health general expenses line item 512-5400 by $628. Currently, that has a balance of $1,065. This will leave it with enough uh, funds in that line item for the Board of Health member stipends. There are no other expenses expected. The total of those reductions is $1,150. That would be transferred and increased into the transfer station general expense line item for three three fifty four hundred. That'll help to cover last June's transfer station invoices to be paid. The Board of Health just wanted to note that normally they end their fiscal year with a surplus in the transfer budget but they hired a new transfer station attendant mid fiscal year after one of their two attendants um, had to leave work. Um, that then allowed somebody else to come on. So it's covering that, that additional expense. However, they are now, they're fine for FY25. It's just due to this yeah. agent staffing this last time. So yeah. it's essentially doing a reduction to total 1150 that then goes into their general expense. Yeah, those transfer station attendants are Awesome. I've awesome. been there very recently and it's yeah. Yeah. Uh, just such a pleasure. I turn around and my car is empty. Yeah. 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 Right. And my dog's <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, the other three items that were noted previously, these are for the select board to be aware of, but it's uh, specifically finance committee. Uh, it's request to transfer out of reserve mm -hmm. fund specifically for the check. Wow. The treasurer general expenses a thousand dollars into that line item to help fill the gap to meet the contract obligation for the salary for the uh, town treasurer collector, as well as cover costs for cross training time between the outgoing assistant treasurer collector, Len Sibley, and the incoming assistant treasurer collector, which will be appointed later in the evening. I think we technically appointed yeah, I think we already She's did. on that list that we approved. Oh, true, you did. Yes, yes. yes. We'll right point point. Twice. Right. Right. We'll point. twice. I got to put it myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, also, uh, for the planning board general expenses, a transfer in of $150 to cover outstanding invoices for legal ads. And then the one last transfer from the reserve fund would be $51 in the into the fiscals and tests uh, that would cover recent fiscal tests and for new hires. That's up to $12. So um, under, what is that? Under $1,500 transfer out of the reserve fund that currently has $20,000. Right. Okay. So, so the one we have to approve is the very first the board one. Of health. Yeah. Uh, well, I move that we uh, approve the transfer of $522 from the hazardous waste transfer station budget and 628 from the board of health budget to general expenses uh, totaling $1,150 to the transfer station general fund. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Long form sign approvals. So next up, uh, Massachusetts Department of Agricultural Resources permit application. I can give you a brief update on this. Um, so the MassDOT requires, um, for Conklin Farm, they want uh, directional signage off of 5 and 10. Um, there are size standards for that. It's like the blue ones, right? Yeah, the blue, blue ones with the name of the place. Yeah, with the arrow. The arrow. Yeah. arrow distance. Um, they're a, a very large size because they're on a high highway um, at a higher rate. Mass DOT, however, also requires trailblazing signs from that property or from the, the highway exit to the property to make sure people know where they're going. Um, the keep is trying to confirm with the District 2 representative what the sizing requirement for those trailblazing signs are. At present, we have information that we believe says that they need to be five feet in width, which doesn't make sense yeah. for a local road. Um, it would mean that we'd be impeding on sort of broad <clears throat> private property with those signs because we would need a double post. Most likely it is a first smaller sign. Uh, at this point, we don't have that. However, Keith does want to make sure that we do move forward, just that we do it at a size requirement that is more appropriate for our local road. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's so interesting that the DOT requires 
Yeah. Oh, it's like, I have no idea. And apparently the trailblazer, I believe, actually needs to be installed before they will put in there. So I think it's a way to ensure that the wayfinding it happens yep. without yep. them putting in and then we forget to do our our thing. So. Uh, the, this the signs um with I ten are gonna direct people up Swamp Road and Christian Lane yes. in the various directions. Correct. Mm -hmm. So that the Pathfinder signs have to be at the essentially the north um, west end of yes. each of those. That's correct. Yep. Uh, so across the street, the north end, uh, uh, west end of Swamp should be Swamp Swamp property. It, it's right. right. I think it's the east end. I think it's on five and ten. So is it coming southbound on five and ten? As you approach Swamp Road, that's where you would find well, it. Right, that's the sign, then, but it's going to direct you up to the end of Swamp. End of Swamp Road. And if you need another sign there, mm -hmm. to, I, well, to if say, they don't mention you, that here. The two signs they do mention are well, no, the, yeah, those are the two signs, but we're talking about the other signs, the Pathfinder. Sure. So oh, these are not the Pathfinder signs, no, that oh. for the actual DOT signs, yeah, right. But there's a contingent requirement for most of them, but focus right. And another sign at the end with an arrow front pointing people up North Street to go to Quantum, but that would be. On Quant Quant property, I think both of those should be. I mean, what one is the, the one off on Christian Lane is very close. The one at the end of Swamp Road. The one at the end of Swamp Road. It might be in the town right of what? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It was down on um, Quant Quant property. Yeah. And the other one, I think, is Borderline Cemetery. Right. Across. So we don't start. approve those ourselves, do we? Then well, we've got like, yeah, like well, signs that go in the, yeah. the right of way or under the jurisdiction of the select board. Oh, but these ones are not. Not those. No. Oh, I thought we were approving those. Ones. No. Okay. So and we don't. Not, we don't that's have for any, your. That's just that plan. Yeah. Right. We don't have anything to do tonight other than. We today. don't have the explicit uh -huh. size. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And we're waiting for more. Yeah. Okay. Right. Oh, thank you. Uh, okay. the, uh, Comcast license renewal ascertainment process notification. Pete, can I throw that over to you again? Yes. Um, so we received a letter from Shonda Green. The Department of Public Communications and Cable um, notifying us that the uh, agreement with Comcast to provide the cable related services in town will expire December 11th of 2026. Um, there is a process, an ascertainment process that you have to follow in order to determine the needs and the, the um, ability to then renew that license. And that should be started at least 12 months prior to the expiration. So this is giving us headway um, to get it started, making sure that either the town or Comcast initiate that process and get started. Um, it's more of a, don't forget the, to get this started, get moving on it. Um, I don't know yet what the ascertainment process is, but I want to make sure that the board is aware that this is coming up, um, but I can follow up with what that process will look like and then, um, we can invite Comcast and start working on the agreement for the license. Yeah, I um I know some of the process. I think oh, you should yeah. look into it because you'll uh, all yeah. of them things. But in the past, what we've done is we've joined Deerfield and Sunderland and negotiated a contract together. Okay, we've hired an attorney. There's only a couple in the state who do this kind of work, um, but they have helped us get what we do get from Comcast to help support our local access um, and. Uh, so it sounds, I think one of our previous meetings, we put me on the committee. Mm -hmm. yeah. So maybe it's time for me to go contact um, Deerfield and Sutherland and find out. Uh, they're technically ahead of us. They're a year or two, a year or so ahead, but we've always negotiated the contracts together. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it gets us a better deal, gets them a better deal. And uh, we all, our needs are so similar. Um, the one thing that, I think it would be a little bit different this time. The last couple of times, um, part of the ascertainment was to figure out if you want any more cables in the in the neighborhood. And 
the last two times I just personally contacted like the three people who didn't have cable then um, and said, is this something you're interested in? And they said, no, but that answer has changed at least for one person. Okay. Um, that they would would like to get somehow cabling up to their street, and they're kind of far away from from other people. So that um, part of the ascertainment is figuring out what more infrastructure do we want, and uh, the other part is figuring out, you know, you know, asking for money for equipment, and so on, and should, basically showing off what we've done with the money they get. Um, so okay. there's a sort of a template for that, but I, I'm sure I missed it. So, no, that, that's very helpful. Yeah. And to that yeah. point, uh, is there a cable at right? Because they reference that's it, but me, I, I think that's more yeah. like a standard. I don't right. Know that's me one. and Randy Sibley are the cable advisory. Okay. And we're technically the people who are supposed to go. contact Deerfield and Sunderland and um, uh, get rolling on that okay. process. Mm -hmm. So well, I'm going to put on my to list. I'm happy to be to, to get in touch with you as well. Yeah. And, uh, and keep you in the loop. Yes. Yeah. And I'll find out who the counterpart of Deerfield will be and who the counterpart of Sunday will be. And if we appointed to do a few That's right. We just got me appointed. Pete, did you want to talk a little bit about the Verizon letter that you received? Sure. Yep. Yeah, so we also received, um, you may know that the Massachusetts Broadband Institute does have a grant program in order to help expand broadband access throughout the Commonwealth. Um, we received a request from Verizon today. They are soliciting uh, uh, grant money or they're requesting grant money from the MBI uh, in order to, to do such an expansion that would include Wheatley. And when they any of these companies are soliciting or soliciting those grant monies, they want to know that the local municipality is in support of them going for that money in order to bring that uh, expansion into the community. It's simply a letter of support. Um, I'm happy to do one, but I would also want to make sure that the board is um, in agreement that we would support Verizon or any other entity to expand that kind of uh, broadband access. Who would Verizon? upgrading their fiber optic capabilities to make them a competitor for Comcast for uh and we have more than one for internet services. Yeah. Yes. 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 That, uh, that could impact the negotiations with Comcast. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, it, uh, the impact that well my understanding and this is of course based on the previous negotiation, um there is a clause in our current you go, uh, agreement with Comcast that if another company comes into town to offer services, that they we're going to ask them to spend as much on our cable access channels as, uh, as Comcast. And that by law in Massachusetts, we can ask for up to 5%. And I think we are at 4.8 or maybe 4.9%. And that was something that the attorney had to negotiate with us and uh, did a good job. Of doing that, so so um, yeah, and I, I think at this point they haven't got the grant yet, <laughs> right, right. Uh, and it's not yet to the point of uh, that. But the, yes, they would be subject to that. Right. Right. But it sounds like they intend to upgrade the fiber optic yeah. capability, and the likelihood is they will do it anyway. They would rather do it with a grant than without a plan. Right. right. Yeah. 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 But if that is in their plan, yes. I think they would not do it. If they would. Sure, because yeah, because it's expensive. It's just, it is. Yeah. 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 Well, I support yeah. that letter. Yeah, I would support that letter. Yeah. Me too. Great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, HCA agreement with EMCTC. If I do, Judy, you're maybe we go to the Center School Working Group. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Judy, is there anybody else coming with you, or do you want to you want to give us the update on the center school working group committee? I apologize for saying the memo that said draft on it. I just forgot to take that off. You could know, move one row up because it's going to be hard to hear you no matter what. That's true. <laughs> now that we have the AC, yes, it feels good in here. Um. The center school committee came last in March to you. We had two days to put together a proposal, which we did. 
um, you gave us till September to firm this up and get better estimates and more information about future uses. As we started to do this, we discovered that the grants that we would be relying on all um, had applications at the end of May or the beginning of June with awards in September, which meant that if we waited till September to start the process, we lose a year. Mm -hmm. So we decided to accelerate. And in fact, we've been scrambling to get estimates and it's been grant applications. And I have to thank Sylvie for her help. When her, when her salary comes up, if any of you ever want to go through one of those state one-stop applications, I worked on, on yeah. one of them. They are. <laughs> yeah. No. We well, got any chance we get to a so we can read So what? What we found, I think, not to anybody's surprise, was that the costs are greater than we had assumed. Mm -hmm. um, we, we ran into some surprises. We had used Sear and Gellarmini's cost estimates because those were what they would, one of the firms that submitted a proposal for, for the building purchasing. Um, they had cost breakdowns. We inflated those for prevailing wage, which the bid. Um, we got some estimates. And, it turned out that slate expert believes that the roof needs replacement, not repair. Mm -hmm. um, Sarah and Gellarmini were nice enough to send Jenny their working notes and some of their estimates. It turned out <coughs> that they had gotten the same diagnosis from two experts before they found a small firm that said they could repair. <laughs> so we're pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. um, so that came in twice as high as we thought. You know, we have since found that there is a substitute slate facsimile that Mass Historical Commission will accept, meaning the Secretary's standards. Um, if you use CPA money or any preservation as historical commission, it's a requirement that historic preservation meet the Secretary of the Interior standards for historic preservation, and they require either a replacement kind or replacement of something that's visually essentially the same. And they have signed off on this substitute slate. It, um, Jones and Woods said, did the town hall work for us? Um, used it on the Ames Library of the Shelburne. And it was part of the original estimate at the Jones Library in Amherst. Mm -hmm. That's the one they want to now replace with asphalt. Um, they're obviously not using CPA money. So we, we will pursue that. Um, the, the manufacturer claims it's roughly half the cost in terms of materials and labor. Do you have actual costs yet? Or not yet. Or yet. Or so, okay. We can move down pretty well here. So I would say so. I'm going to suggest applauding you and the committee's work as well because you really a fire got lit under you and you went well. We, we needed some credibility for the application. Well, so yeah. Had, yeah. Um, masonry, we didn't have the final estimate when, when we submitted the application, but we did have the one that was given to Sierra and Gellarmini. That turned out to be twice what they showed in their cost estimates for spent. Why they did that? I won't expect it. <laughs> um, when we got ours, it was twice the zero and Joe meeting one, all of which, almost all of which was markup for prevailing wage. 
which I don't understand, but it was 100% of them, which is what it is. Um, Windows came under about the same. We also got a, at a, about $90,000, including storms to repair the windows. And we got an estimate for feasibility study for $25,000 from Jones and Whitsit. We increased about 10% for the application. So we put in an application for the uh, underutilized property fund. It's a state program for municipalities that have uh, underutilized or abandoned buildings they want to repurpose. So it's for a few weeks. Grants go up to a million dollars. 50,000 to a million last year's average 40,000, 400,000. So we've got our fingers crossed. We put an application for 680, three or $4,000. 12% of that is a match, which we've applied for with the CPA. You get extra consideration if you put a match and you get special consideration if it's over 10%. So we put 12% and we have an application to the CPA for that. Where, where did you, you say you put in an application for 680,000? How did that figure get arrived at? It was the budget. It was the new estimates, right? The, it's the new, new estimates. I have one copy of this I can I can say, yeah, said, but you, you said you didn't have numbers. We had hard numbers for the roof. Yeah, we had hard numbers for the roof. We put in the 335. We used, um, you put in the cost yeah, for sleep. Uh, yeah, the 335 and the 338. Yeah, I don't have a copy of the roof. Oh, exactly. We, we had an estimate for the, for the windows. We used Sarah and Joe Romini's. Uh, masonry estimate. The one which we hope, hope, hope they got. Yeah. yeah. Hit us by 140. We um we basically made up some carpentry numbers. We included the feasibility study number. Um we had, we had an estimate for a structural engineer at 4500 mm -hmm. and um we we made up structural repair numbers at sixty thousand. We did came up to that. So we have also put in that match request to the CPA. And when does the CPA make their decisions? They uh, it had to be in by June eleventh. They will sign it for a special town meeting in the fall. Um, we haven't yet found out when the match, how long the town has to come up with a match if we get the award. Um, I think the CPC can be ready and hold their public hearing by, by early, mid April, the mid August. Um, and so I would, we might need a special town meeting just to approve that. And the, the CPA request was the twelve percent, so that's seventy five thousand. It's up to, it's up to eighty two thousand for this, and there's another fourteen thousand to match a feasibility study grant National okay. Trust. So all in all, it's up to ninety six thousand. To, to come out of there. Historic preservation bucket. Um, that in unallocated funds. That but it would be dedicated to historic preservation. Yeah. There's plenty of money there. Yeah. Um, so, so part of your job. Yep. So when you want to, you uh, you can recognize anybody else too, so, so they can speak. Right. So, I was <laughs> focusing. I was so focusing on you that I did not see. So I have Jamie. I'd like to recognize you. Would you speak? 
I have two questions, Judy. Um, number one, what is the idea for future plans for the building, future uses? Well, that's to be determined, obviously, because um, we had some proposals mm -hmm. that we came up with. The feasibility study would look at specific constraints like code accessibility, um, space, and work with the town to recommend what's best. Okay. Um, our thought was <clears throat> we want to, it was important that it be things that the community wanted. Our thought was affordable housing for upstairs and then maybe a some sort of revenue generating use for the basement that would help maintain cost for the building. Um, the most popular one so far is what Julie suggested, a, a small grocery store, maybe an annex of like a muffins like maybe store. So my understanding is that the town would be the landlord yep. if there was a tenant in some way. And then my second question is, my understanding with CPA applications is there needs to be some type of urgency to the application for it to fall on, I, I don't know, it's considered a lot cycle. Yeah. Um, I would strongly suggest that this application for the, a type of, that this type of application for the center school go to annual town meeting for. Um, I don't know, I, I'm not part of the CP, the CPC, um, but I, I'm not necessarily sure uh, in my opinion, there's an urgency to it to go to a special town meeting where attendance is much lower. Um, mostly, I, that's just my my. It, it, it sounds like it may depend on the the grants and the need to match. The, the grants. There's an urgency in matching. My guess is we're going to devote all of the grant money to the roof, and there's huge urgency on fixing the roof. But the ninety six thousand is. What is going to be requested from CPA funds? Up to ninety six thousand. I guess strongly it, suggest that it go to the annual town meeting for. If the ninety six thousand is not appropriated at a special town meeting, is that going to change your plans or your eligibility for any of these grants? I guess is it would invalidate all the grants. So in that case, there is urgency. Yeah. I'm we don't have to decide that right now. Right. No, I'm just right. curious. I, 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 I'm looking for information. So this 96000 is the match money for the grants. Yeah. The, the grants. I see. So if we okay. have 600000 yeah. then the town would have to put up 82000 We get 300000 town would put up 36000 Okay. I'm just so there's one like last that. comment. Mm -hmm. I just know that the building has been sitting there for years. So please take that into consideration about the urgency and grants and all of this. We've had this visioning committee for a yeah, while now. It's clear that just it is considered that. First, the roof, and then obviously the grants. And the, my comment on your first question is I think that the potential uses will depend on how much of the repair work we get done and how much a potential buyer, tenant, whatever would have to put into it. So I think that what the state of the building is going to make help government. Who we get to respond. Building with a new roof and other improvements is going to be more attractive. I just don't know. I just hope taking into consideration that if the town owns it, what does the town have to? Is there a requirement that we are in the aging plan? Is there other requirements that where it's a town building? What are so I'm just no, I, I yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Pete, did you have something? It, my only question, it sounds like the the work that you want to do is really about the envelope, the exterior, yep. and the structure so that it can be all fitted work. out eventually. But it's not yeah, really sure. doing any changes to the interior yeah. because that'll be determined. Once yeah. again. That was, I should have let off with that because indeed that was the charge. It yeah. was all stuff to get building stabilized. Yeah. And then any work above it, above it would have to depend on it. As a board, a year or more ago, we made a commitment to the preservation of the outside of the building that we're on record. Yeah, even through that. the RFP process. Right, even through, yeah. right. Through the, then we had lengthy discussions of this and we were <laughs> absolutely firmly committed that the exterior of the building essentially be restored but unchanged. So there's a 
there's one more piece of this, the CPC, the CP, there's, as Amy knows, there's a administrative expense fund for the CPA. Um, that's something that the CPC can, can spend um, without going to town meeting. And it's designed for things like uh, appraisals or legal documents or paying public hearing ads. <laughs> Um, but the CPC did vote up to $5,000 to hire a structural engineer to do a, an that analysis. Um, that and that money is available now. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the yeah. one question I believe um, previously with Brian, the previous town administrator, that the board allow the town administrator to sign any agreements or contracts of 5,000 or lower under $5,000. I just wanted to reconfirm with the board if that is still true for myself. And for that's that's been yeah. superseded. So yeah, I'm yeah, still on that. Okay. And just to clarify, those expenses are coming out of the CPA administration. Okay, thank you. Any further comments, questions, discussion? Thank you, and please, Say thank you to the rest of the community. We're really working hard on its office. Thank you. Uh, Castaways variants. Uh, is Nick coming or Amy, are you speaking to that? I can speak to it. I I have not spoken to Nick if he will be attending, but um is, is Nick supposed to attend? Is that Nick was supposed to, yeah. Nick was supposed to attend. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We agreed. Um, um is it appropriate to yeah. let's just go ahead and have Amy speak to it and then we can speak to yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Um, he comes so in. it's my understanding that after your last um public hearing or meeting with Nicholas Badola in regard to castaways, um, it came up that he is delinquent on taxes, which is still the case. I did have email correspondence with him on June 10th. Um, he did reach out wondering what the delinquent amount was. I provided him with his fiscal um his uh Third quarter and fourth quarter tax amounts that were still are still outstanding today. Um, in addition to that, we also we I'm also just sending out bills for first quarter taxes for FY25. Um, so there will be that additional expense added on to the delinquent taxes. Um, it's real estate taxes and personal property taxes that are delinquent at this time. Okay. And, uh, do we know the status of the? I'm sorry. Do we know the status of the uh, payment for the past details? I know some of those. Uh, they're still outstanding. Still outstanding. <clears throat> and more since last week. Right. The additional ones were outstanding as well. Well, I don't see any reason to be accommodating. Uh, no, I, I think no. we can let the, let the conditions let the condition stand as written. Yeah. Um, they're back on their states. And, uh, and do I need a motion for that? I, okay. All right, put that in properly for a motion. Uh, oh, oh, sorry. The, the chair might recognize someone in the audience. Yeah. Oh, hi. Just, yes. Just one, one additional Please. point to add. I know it's come up a few times. Thank I know you. I brought up in the last meeting as far as mandating police details there. If we're going to continue doing Friday, Saturday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, that's going to be a, a hardship for the police department. It's, it's going to be extremely difficult to fill those details if they're mandated. And to mandate something that's not being paid for anyways, there's... It's just going to refer to the town water. Well, this is in the context of a group who has uh, both a liquor license and an entertainment license, mm -hmm. who have a track record of pushing on those conditions to see what they can get away with. You know, they, they opened originally, I don't know if people remember this, they opened without meeting the conditions of their liquor license. And they by the way, because I am only one vote of three. That's why they got away with it. Uh, and eventually, we did close them down for not complying with those conditions. And once they were closed down, they complied. Okay. And going. here, I, I feel like this is, again, uh, a pattern of, um, look, this is a condition. If it was important to you to have this condition removed, then you would show up or you would 
email or call and say why you can't come and can we please reschedule this or whatever the whatever the case may be. And I think we made it clear last time that you need to pay your taxes and you need to pay those other things. Absolutely. I don't know if we can just <clears throat> shut them down and say you're out of compliance with your conditions because they wouldn't be, right? If they as long as they have the police detail on uh, Thursday, uh, Friday, Saturday as specified. I don't think we can shut them down. But I don't I'm I'm not in favor of loosening the conditions under the, the current circumstances. Yeah, it's it's tough because it puts a hardship on you and your on the police department. department. Yeah. On the other hand, it, yeah, to, to it remove does, it does yeah. them a big favor. Yeah, right? but I'm I'm just looking at it from uh, I'm not concerned about their feelings or helping them or not helping them. I'm just looking at it from the police department's perspective and the hardship that's going to put on us and trying to fill currently trying to fill shifts, let alone filling details. And mm -hmm. shifts are priorities. So if I only have one officer that wants to take the shift. And I can't provide a detail, then we're putting them in that compliance by saying, sorry, you can't have a detail. So to have some sort of option, some sort of like give them the opportunity to run without requiring the details. So that we did. I don't think the benefit of the one day no, the third we did for four months. Yeah, but just that was just one day for the Thursday. Right. <clears throat> you still kept it on Friday and Saturday. Details are Friday and Saturdays. Right. Is it a hardship to have details on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, or any details at all? Uh, in my 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 opinion, it's it's a hardship, no matter how we look at it. Any of the details there. I don't I don't feel that we need to necessarily be there. I don't think it's a benefit that we're we're able to stop things from happening or we're there, I don't, I don't think why aren't you able to stop I don't things? really agree with you on that. I think yeah. your you, presence there on Fridays and Saturday nights has made a difference. You, you can say that. I you can say that, but we don't know that until we give them the opportunity well, to run. I, 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 I don't think I want to run that experiment, Jim. <laughs> I'm gonna suggest that it is not a huge favor to them to remove a detail for Thursday, but I'd like to see a detail on Friday and Saturday, and I'd like them to pay their back taxes, right. and I'd like them to pay the police department. And then if they right. don't do that, we'll look at further action <clears throat> on behalf of the town. Uh, what if we do something like this? I we don't even have a request from them to withdraw the Friday Saturday details. So, so we don't, and, and so, at the so, moment we don't have a request for the Thursday because they're not here. Well, we had a request that was ongoing, which we were supposed to discuss with them today. He's not here. Yeah. What if we can request a certification from a our chief that there is a requirement for Thursday, but a certification if he is unable to fill that, that we just hear from him that. He is unable to fill. That, we're doing that, that as a courtesy right, to the police. We're doing that, right? Not as a right. The, the requirement is in I place. Think we should look into that a little more. Thank you, pardon. I, I, I'm not ready to make that decision. Okay. <laughs> and well, how would we look into it? Well, I'm the police liaison. <laughs> so <laughs> might fall on my lap. Okay. Uh, just to have a conversation. Yeah. yeah. I'm just looking for some way to leave leave the yeah the requirement in place, but give our police some flexibility in like that, I, I setting like, priorities for allocation yeah. manpower. Like I've not heard of any of any nights when there wasn't a detail that there was supposed to be one. Jim, did you have something else to say? Um yes I did. <laughs> <laughs> oh I seen your moments. I just, I just, I just, just want to say duly <laughs> noted that Nicholas Sokol did not show up for the meeting. It'll come back after the show. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, I'll catch up with you later, Jim. Yeah, so the next steps oh, are to we send Jim will meet. Okay. I remember what it was. Okay. So for a standard police detail, if we can't fill the detail, we go outside of the town mm -hmm. to fill the detail. That's that's how every yeah. town does it. We work with other towns, they work yeah. with us. That's not the case with this. There's union issues, there's department issues, there's fee issues with other departments where Nobody's going to come help us either. So if, we, if we're trying to fill three details per week and we can't fill it, I'm not going outside of the department to try to fill it because I've already been told nobody else is going to be interested in taking it. So it's just another another point to add. And then the way things have currently been going, you say that we haven't 
had a situation where we haven't been able to fill the details. We only have two people, the two people that are taking details right now. Um, they're alternating every other week. For Saturday details, there was an officer that used to work in our department who was working for um, Conway Police Department who was working the Saturday details. He's now no longer going to be doing that after July 1st. Um, so the Saturdays will fall solely on us. We've only been filling one detail a week. And that's, it hasn't, hasn't been easy, but just to, to add some more context to it, just from our perspective. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I guess no, I think we take just, no action then. Take, yeah, take, take no action and look into possible <clears throat> ways to deal with it. So if no action is taken, does that go back to the original Thursday, Friday, Saturday? Yeah. Yeah. And you and Joyce are going to discuss. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next on the agenda, FERCOG surplus fiscal no, year. Yeah, yeah. We did that. No. no, no yeah, oh, I checked it off and we did not do that. HCA. That's the canvas. Okay, Thank yeah. you. So we received notices from the CCC that three of the agreements, the DMC, gonna make this spell it tomorrow, yeah. Verde, yeah. and yeah. Urban Grown, um, all of their agreements as part of their renewal process are in non-compliance, primarily due to the fact that there is a new model agreement document, um, and that model is based on the new requirements and restrictions and uh, limitations that a community do in a host community agreement. Um, some of that has to do with requirements as to prepayment of certain fees. Others are the requirement of coverage of legal costs on the um, the business. And so at present, we need to uh, look at either amending the agreements or utilizing the model agreement. Um, I haven't been able to dive into the model agreement. I, I do know that there are some significant changes from the previous but it really is due to yeah. the regulation changes. Um, we do have a 30 day requirement to get those updated. However, it likely can be out to 90 days. I believe Lynn had previously already requested that it, they be pushed that we get a 90 day. Okay. Um, and I will verify that so, at present. Um, I, I would like to work on utilizing the model agreement engage with all three of those entities um, and then to bring those forward to the board. I think we approved a one of the HCAs with a new agreement to the, uh, based on the model. Oh, okay. Um, I will try to find it. Okay. Um, thanks. I'm sorry. Amy, just a quick question. Does the new agreement uh, remove community impact piece? It's not that there's a removal, it's the methodology of how they're determined and okay. when payment on those fees are responsible. If I could possibly be involved just as a uh, treasurer collector um, in some of these uh, conversations, just so I have an idea of the tracking of, of payments and, and payment like due dates. Um, I'm only saying this because there was a question in regard to DMCTCs, um, current post community agreement with community impact fees. And if the town was getting any revenue from them, which um, I see that we have not. So I just yeah. want to make sure that I'm informed to us to the you know, payments moving forward. Yeah. I'm pretty sure the, the marijuana lobbyists eliminated any possibility that we will ever get any right. fees, although yeah, right. it's you know, probably something we sit in sales tax. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And yeah. that if there were any fees, the administrative costs of our recovering them would probably outweigh what we would get back. Right. Okay. I did find it. It was for a new courier business. So um, uh, I will take that uh, and I'll forward you. Um, right. The, so that you know, that was not the retail establishment. It was not a retail establishment. It was a for that new courier business. And then the, I think at the time we knew this was coming. So we got that one. And we're like, I don't know what the schedule is going to be, but to come quickly and change the other one. So I'm um, authorized Pete to take whatever steps and engage in whatever negotiations are necessary to get into compliance. Do we need a motion to authorize him to do that? I, I think it's just already his job. No, it's, 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 yeah. <laughs> I move to Pete do his job. <laughs> I second. All right. Okay. Moving along, FERCOG surplus fiscal year 24. 
And again, I'm going to throw this over to Pete. To... Yes. So um, the the council had a meeting Thursday night last week. Um, we went over the surplus that's available based on the fiscal year budget from last this past year. There was a significant uh, surplus, and that was due to the COG being able to secure a number of different grants that helped to reduce essentially what would be the assessments that were on the community. So uh, by unanimous, unanimous votes, the communities will receive those surplus funds back. And for Wheatley, it was just under $9,000, $8,932 will be returned. And where does that money go? General fund? I believe it's the general fund, right? Okay. Thank you. Uh, number seven, Franklin County Solid Waste Management District, fiscal year 25, memorandum of understanding. Uh, copies. Copies that need to be signed yeah, uh, just as the official copies for signature. Yeah. These are your signature. Yeah. Third party inspection. And yeah, so one of them seems to be primarily about the uh, hazardous waste collection. Um, Well, there, there are two copies of each of the two. Oh, yeah, and the other one got it. Thank you. But the first one is for hazardous waste days, and then we agree to pay our share. Mm -hmm. um, I think these are pretty standard. I have to sign them yeah. much every year. Is this the chair signs or everybody? Uh, every, I have that for a copy. I'm going to tap it down. That's when it's signed. Yep. You'll see the little tabs. It's easy for you. And do we need to like move and vote that? Yes. Okay. okay. I'll, then we'll, we can do that. While, we can do that while signing, right? All righty. So, uh, I move that we uh, enter into the MOU uh, on the, for, with the Franklin County Solid Waste Management District, uh, the first memorandum on uh, hazardous waste collection and the second memorandum on third party inspection of our municipal transfer station. Second. Uh, excuse me. Apparently, I can't write and speak at the same time. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Um, is there information in our packets about what that? There is not. Um, I can give you a brief. Okay. Uh, essentially, there are some unexpected funds or unutilized, underutilized funds mm -hmm. that are available. I don't have the numbers just yet. I will bring this back on the next agenda mm -hmm. uh, just so that you can be aware of what that total is, but also thinking about potential other projects or where there may be additional needs. Um, can't be much. It can't. It's it's not much, but uh, I just need Lynn, to verify with I, Lynn. Lynn mentioned to me a couple of weeks ago. She said it could be as much as about thirty thousand. Probably won't be that much, but it could be that. Oh. Well, these are just these are funds that have been allocated for projects that came in under budget or yeah. didn't get done or whatever. Yeah. Um, well, that's how it was. Uh, I, I just want to be sure that any that the projects that we want to get done with that that yeah. just haven't been undertaken. I know that the uh, uh, town hall door had still have to be done. That shouldn't be included in this money because that is a project that still needs to be done. But apparently, there's some. Issue of interaction between the 
the people doing the door design and the electrical work that's involved with the automatic openings uh, that still have to be resolved. Neil sure. would keep on that. Yeah. Yeah. But I just want to make sure that that project is not listed among those yeah. that, are, that have not been done. Okay. But we'll have a shoot at those different yeah. projects that were approved, yeah. what the actuals are, and where that right. is from. Oh. Okay. 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 Next item on the agenda assistant treasurer collector position. Apparently, I, we already did it. I'm so glad. Yeah. I'm so glad we appointed. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> We we do need to vote to appoint them. Yeah. Well, yeah. well. Well, we appointed, but we haven't hired her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. Good point. <laughs> then I, I would anybody like to speak to her being hired? <laughs> I can say great things. Um, rumor has it Lynn Sibley is officially going to retire June thirtieth. Um, so <laughs> yeah. we I'll believe it when I see it. Yeah, I know. Well, I have a um, so we did um, post for the assistant treasurer collector position. We got a few applicants in. Um, Maureen Nichols was the applicant we wanted to move forward with. She has some municipal experience um, working over in part time in Sunderland, um, and she'll also be here about ten hours a week. And we think she's going to be a great fit. Fantastic. We have a statistician. I guess we yes. So, so I, I will move that we hire Maureen Nichols. I'll well, second that. Assistant. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, old business dog, Sonic and dog update. Chief, I believe you're gonna update us about this. I don't have much of an update other than we haven't had any calls on the dog because the dog is the shelter. still being held. Uh, the dog is still being held. There, thank you. We're gonna get a bill for that. So. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure that I'm sure that's coming. Yeah. I know that I don't see, see no. Leslie from the shelter was going to join. I had get let her know around seven o'clock. Um, but then that was before we found out that um, Denise had gone to the district court and filed an appeal. Oh, she did. So the appeal had been filed, but I don't believe that has been scheduled yet. Okay, and what happens next? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she would she would file it. She filed the appeal with the court. There would be a hearing. And the appeal sure. is to get the dog back, or the appeal is to overturn our decision that it was a dangerous dog. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, so once once that appeal comes up, the court would make a decision as to whether or not the were um, order stands, or <clears throat> she gets the dog back. That that would be my assumption. Um, I'm not animal control, so I haven't been through these hearings before. So yep. I'm not sure who is going to be the uh, you know, what's but, one the town yeah. is going to be going. To How did you find it. out about the, the one you got here in the set? And the town will be yeah. yeah. And yeah. somebody from the town needs to attend. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And and do other members of the public who like the like the people who came to us. That influenced our decision that this is a dangerous dog. Are those people also going to be notified of the hearing, or can we? Are we allowed to notify them ourselves when we get notification? I, I don't know that. I I don't believe that they would specifically be notified by the court, but it, I don't yeah. think that there's a limitation that we can't notify them. Because I, I I think we probably should. Yeah. Because it, and that actually, I mean, the the people who are willing to show up and say what happened. Really, that made it that made a difference, I think. Uh, and I think it would make a difference to someone else reviewing the same information. Same information. Yeah, but the, the question I, I don't know what the procedures are. Yeah, in this case, that's right. Whether, whether this needs some, another hearing about the dog or simply a review of the record. Mm -hmm. In which case, you know, we might need a representative, but they will look at the video of the two hearings. And Typically, yeah, appeals review the process and procedure that was done in order to make the determination to determine whether or not you applied to a valid process to make that decision. Um, 
-hmm. it's not necessarily it's not to make a determination on the dog if it's right. Um, it should not be a new hearing yeah. on the back. Determination so. on our decision. Yeah, that's not how yeah. process. Okay. Yeah. They may or may not hear from anybody else. Right. They may not allow. They may not even hear even me. I, I would think. I think most most hearing most appeals don't allow new evidence to be put in for the review of the record. Yes. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. All right. Um, I want to put in as um, information um, that I contacted. My concern is that we're going to end up with no option other than to consider euthanizing the dog. And I would personally hate to see that happen because I think the dog has been poorly trained uh, and has become fearful and aggressive as a result of that. I have reached out to a number of uh, animal trainers in the area. One I heard back from who does not do analyses and um, assessments of dogs, but two others I have contacted and I have not heard back from them yet, um, requesting to find out if they do analyses of uh, dangerous dogs and whether they could possibly be rehomed. In, a, in an appropriate situation were such an appropriate situation to be found because I prefer, as a dog lover myself, that Miles not be collateral damage in what is a pretty bad situation to begin with. I just wanted to put that out there and say that that's what I'm aiming for. And I will let the board know when I hear back from the animal treatment uh, agencies what, what they say. No. Uh, I know that's farther down the line after the appeal is held and the process is decided we're doing this. Thank so, you. Yeah. Would, would that absolve it further down the road? Would that absolve it from any liability? Maybe it's a council question. That's where if the, if the dog is retrained and home with somebody else, the town still <clears throat> is dangerous. I believe the town, my understanding, and I we need to find out more about this is that the town, if the dog is rehomed, we need to make it very clear that the dog has been deemed dangerous and that the parties accepting the dog um, sign off on that and say that they understand that and they take responsibility. Again, if we can find somebody who's willing to do that, uh, that would be my practice. But we may end up in a sad position. Uh, liaison updates, select board. Oh, um, that uh, awesome Cracker Jack of the Senior Center director yeah. got a two more, two out of three grants that applied for in about uh, in, in the last couple of months. Um, two more grants came in, um, came in positive. Fantastic. Um, so they're just uh, going like gangbusters over there. Um, and there, I've had no meetings in my Liaison with that is going to reiterate what we said before about Tri Town Beach. That, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, not a liaison, yeah. I want to speak in favor of Tri Town Beach and the work they do. Tri Town Beach needs you. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And the water commissioners, the latest meeting, they made a determination about um, a fee that was applied to folks who needed their meters manually read and the fee was reduced. Significantly, and that was about it. Do you have a question? I'm sorry, Ian. Sorry if I missed it. Um, who is the town office liaison? Uh, me. You always. Oh, thank you. Okay. As of an hour. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So fresh. Hey. Okay. Down, town administrators updates. I do not have any updates at this time. Uh, okay. We went over the Verizon one, which was going to be an update. On new business. Yeah. Yep. But um, yeah, feel free to reach out to me if I have any of you have any questions or anything that you need to look into. But uh, it's been a great first week, first week plus now. Yeah. Great. Any items not anticipated? All right, I would I would take a motion. You set next meeting. Oh, oh okay. look at that upcoming upcoming meeting. Yeah, I got the we stay on our regular schedule of July 9th and yep. 23rd. 
I will not be in town for the ninth, but every effort to get on Zoom and maybe I will not be here either. Any quality of internet. I don't know if that matters, but I will not be here tonight. I will also not be here. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I'm in charge. <laughs> Unless you're going back to Sweden, then. No, I, I'm actually, I'm usually. The Do we want to consider changing the date to the 16th? Uh, do the 16th and the 30th instead of the 9th and the 23rd? That would work for that. I'm okay with that. I am still away on the 16th, but. So it's a safe, but you may be able to get. Get to Delphi. On this yeah. And I'm away on the 30th, but absolutely can join you. Okay. So, all right. So 716 and 716 and 730. Okay. Any other items for discussion prior to entertaining a motion to adjourn? I move to adjourn. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Bye. Thank you, friends. <laughs>